A common question as our bees start to dwindle and the brood rearing decreases and we're getting ready to go into the winter months is how do I tell if my queen is failing or my hive is just naturally dwindling and the brood is reducing because of the season. Now, the quick answer to this is that's why it's so important to have more than one hive because then you've got a comparison point. You can say, how does the brood in this hive look compared to my other two hives? How does the bee population decline uh, and look in this hive compared to my other two or three or 10 hives? Having that comparison is so important. You know, if I just had one beehive, even commercially, I mean, it would be, if I had one beehive in one location, it would be hard for me to tell sometimes, you know, is this a problem or not? I'm constantly comparing and contrasting hives uh, with each other as I'm working bees. And so it's natural to have some decline in population, but really this time of year, early October, our hive populations should be quite high. This is really the as good as it's gonna get um, all winter long. It's gonna be downhill from here. So if you've got a hive that's struggling, it's not gonna get better from here. It's gonna get worse from here. So it's time to combine it with another hive or transfer it to a smaller nook box or something if it's you know below four frames of bees um, because it's not gonna typically get better from here. Now, when I'm going through a hive this time of year, um, what am I looking for uh, as far as a problem? You know, again, if they have less than a deep box full of bees, then I'm a little concerned. Something's going on with that hive, and usually the culprit is varroa mites are not having fed enough. But when it comes to brood, again, I'm comparing how many frames of brood does this potentially problem hive have compared to all my other hives. And then what does the brood look like? So let's just look at a few things. For me, the telltale signs is, do I see larvae that are crumpled or yellow or twisted looking? How does my larva look? Um, this frame, it's getting kind of uh, cloudy out here. It's gonna rain hopefully soon. It hadn't rained much in forever, so hopefully it rains. But this frame uh, has cat brood and pollen uh, and some capped honey on it. So you can maybe see that uh, that yellow and orange pollen in those cells mixed with the cat brood. This is pretty common this time of year where you start to see the bees mixing in pollen and nectar with all of your brood. So it makes it very difficult to see if your queen has a good pattern or not. So you can see like on this frame, it almost looks like a really spotty brood pattern because you've got this scattered cat brood mixed with pollen but in many cases, it's just because the queen is laying around pollen or honey that are already in that frame. And so what I do, if I see a frame like this where that brood looks a little bit spotty, is I'm gonna look at the other frames in the hive and see if I can find a frame that does have a good brood pattern. And so here we go. This is exactly what I'm looking for. So this frame has a pretty good brood pattern. You can see that this whole section here, the queen did a very good job of laying in a very compact brood pattern. So when I find a few frames where they have sections of pretty compact brood pattern, I'm really not worried about them. I say, you know what, I'm not gonna blame the queen uh, for a couple frames that had spotty brood. It's probably just because she, again, she was laying around um, pollen and nectar that the bees have brought in and started backfilling because we're getting closer to winter. The other thing I'm going to look for is just the quantity of brood. You know, does this hive have the same quantity of brood that my other hives have? And if it's, you know, several frames off, then I might have an issue. But as long as it's within a couple frames, I'm not too concerned. You can see there's again a good brood pattern um, on both sides. She's got a perfectly fine brood pattern. Everything looks very, very healthy. I, you won't be able to see it in the video, but there is quite a bit of larva in this hive. And that larva just looks very, very pearly white. Shiny, pearly white, that's what I'm looking for. I don't wanna see twisted yellow, et cetera. Um, usually, when you have a bad queen and bad brood, you know it when you see it, <laughs> you know? Especially, again, if you've got a couple different hives you're comparing it to. You'll go through a hive that looks like this. It's got that nice compact pattern, at least on a few frames. Larva looks pearly white and shiny. 
and then you'll get to a bad hive and it just looks terrible. And that compare and contrast is the best way this time of year to tell if you have a problem or not. So um, again, that brood should look compact, it should, the larva should look pearly white, um, and as long as you've got that, then you probably do not have an issue. If you do have a queen issue this late in the season, the best bet in general is to just combine that hive with another hive. We've got a lot of other videos on how to combine hives. You can check those out on our YouTube channel. But it's hard to get a hive to survive the entire winter um, with no queen. They might survive, but there's a good chance there'll be a drone layer when they come out on the other side. Um, and they probably won't rebound in the spring. So if you lose a queen or have a very, very poor queen this time of year, it's usually better just to go ahead and combine that hive with another one. But compare it with your other hives to make sure it's actually the queen's fault.